skin. We all have a lot of it. In fact, it's the largest organ in our body. Many of us, including men, make an effort to take care of it. Generally, that care is limited to the facial area. In spite of the sometimes considerable amount of money that young women in particular spend on their skin care, a lot of them still do not achieve what they're looking for. That is, flawless, radiant, healthy looking skin. This is because often the fundamentals of good skin are either overlooked or simply not understood. The education system doesn't really teach young people how to take care of their skin, nor for that matter, the rest of their body. As a result, people grow up knowing very little about their skin and how to keep it youthful looking. Instead, their education comes from commercial interests trying to sell them some miracle solution. Because of this general lack of understanding about skin, I am today going to give you a simple overview of what the skin really is, and then that will be followed in the next two programs with the action you need to take to achieve the skin that you've always wanted. The first thing to understand about skin is that it is a barometer to what is going on inside your body. All skin conditions ranging from acne to aging are all outward manifestations of your body's internal needs, and this includes nutritional ones. When you experience anything on your skin, whether it be a rash, a blemish, or even wrinkles, it is telling you that it needs some support, either internally through the lacking of some nutrients that you need to ingest through your mouth, or the need to apply something externally, direct on the skin. Now, sadly, so many people will apply various things to their skin, which can often make the situation worse. Now, the good news is, that the skin is constantly renewing itself. In fact, the skin you see today will be gone in another month. This means that it is never too late to start improving your skin. A few facts that you may be interested to know about skin. At every square inch of your body, you have around 19 million skin cells. Also, in each square inch of skin, you have 650 sweat glands, 20 blood vessels, and more than 1,000 nerve endings. Every day, you're producing around 30 to 40,000 new skin cells and shedding about the same amount. When you think about this, you realize how important it is to provide the right fuel in the form of nutrients to keep things functioning properly. Okay, about the structure of the skin. The skin is made up of three layers, the top being the epidermis, the middle layer being the dermis, and the lower level being the subcutaneous layer. The surface level of the epidermis is comprised of flat, dead skin cells which are replaced weekly. These cells are basically our body armour and protect us from the elements. It also acts to help retain the water, moisture and the next level down, which is the dermis. Although the epidermis is a protector, it also needs to be treated with care. Subjecting it to harsh chemicals such as alpha hydroxy acid may give it a short-term benefit with regard to appearance but may accelerate the aging of the skin in the long term. Now moving on to the dermis. This is where things get interesting. It is also the biggest influencer of how smooth and supple your skin is. It is made up of a matrix of water, blood, and fibrous strands of collagen and elastin, a, a bit like uh, woven netting. The collagen and elastin are supposed to be moist and plump and gives skin its fullness and shape. It is primarily collagen that serves this purpose, but elastin plays a valuable role because as the name suggests, it provides elasticity, which enables the skin to bounce back to its original position when stretched. But both collagen and elastin are vulnerable to free radicals, which causes them to shrink and cross-link with other collagen and elastin fibers. As the collagen and elastin base shrinks, the skin on the surface folds over itself. And then what? You guess it wrinkles. This is why applying creams, no matter how good they are, can only go so far. The problem with wrinkles goes much deeper and an external solution is only partially effective. The dermis does a lot more than what I have just talked about here. For example, it houses the lymphatic system, which is so crucial in the elimination of waste in the skin. If the system is operating at less than optimal levels, then it will cause problems to your skin. 
The exercise helps keep your lymphatic system working well. The innermost layer of the skin, which is called the subcutaneous layer, which primarily holds fats, muscles, and blood vessels. The fats and muscles help act as a shock absorber and form the foundation of the skin. The effectiveness of all these systems that make up your skin are influenced by your digestive system, your liver and kidneys. They're all interdependent. Next week, in part two, I will show you how you can help your skin by taking various steps to slow down and potentially reverse the effect of aging on your skin. And if you are young, how you can maintain that youthful skin for decades to come. So until then, bye for now.